right sophomore guard, uh, Dejon Drew. Coach, if you wouldn't mind, just advise him. Take a few questions. Uh, two tough teams. It was hard to um, get an easy shot. You know, they um, made some tough ones. We made some tough ones. Um, you know, maybe the difference in the game is we were at home tonight. You know, and we've got to try to go to their place. Obviously, it's always tough to win on the road. But just proud of our kids' effort, proud of our fight. You know, the stuff that we've built here over the years, the culture that we've uh, established and our, our kids have done such a great job of buying into uh, comes out in games like this you know we've um, you know to win as many games as we have you have to win so many different ways there, there's no I, I don't know offensively if there's a constant uh, with us if there is a constant is that we always have somebody uh, that steps up you know tonight it was uh, um, Dejan and uh, who else? Or Corey? <laughs> oh, there were a couple of times there I, I had to remind Corey we were wearing white and not black. Um, but you know, it's uh, um, you know, Armani gets 12 points, uh, five offensive, seven defense rebounds. Uh, tremendous job by Armani. Proud of him. Uh, Nate Hinton. You know, we've got two very good defenders in um, uh, Davis and um, Robinson. But uh, Cumberland, you know, was just too good uh, tonight. And the guy that did the best job was um, uh, Nate. I thought his size size was a uh, factor. And then, um, you know, we did a better job of loading to the ball uh, on his drives. Uh, Chris came over and blocked his shot. The only problem with that was if we didn't block the shot, and he got the ball up on the backboard. They were hurting us a little bit on the offensive boards. Uh, that's, that's one of those, uh, take something away, you usually give something up. But uh, our kids battle. Uh, Cincinnati kids battle. Two really good teams uh, going at it. Uh, we're fortunate to get the win. Kelvin, Mick thought the difference in the game was a nine block shot. Your nine block shot. Some thoughts about that? Yeah, well, that's our loading, uh, but that's um, um, when I know it's going to be a defensive ball game. I usually go to Bryson and Chris, and maybe a little less of Breon. You know, I think if it's going to be an offensive ball game, you'll probably see a little bit more of Breon, maybe a little less of uh, Chris. So uh, every, every game presents a different uh, set of uh, circumstances. Um, but uh, Chris is. Uh, developed into a good shot blocker. Uh, Bryson's developed into a good shot blocker. And when those two guys are on the rim, they're excellent rim protectors. But that's, uh, that's their job. You know, it's not an accident. You know, they've, uh, uh, brought, Bryson blocked two shots at Central Florida the other night that were tremendous, uh, that we got runouts off of on, um, um, on possessions where uh, they got into the paint. Uh, Dawkins and Taylor, I think, were the two guys. But Bryson came over and blocked the shot. But uh, we have two guys who can really um, uh, block shots. And Fabian's not bad either. Dejan, when you were going through that little stretch where you had the 11 straight, just take me through your mindset, what you're thinking, having to have the ball as often as what you wanted. Um, I just took what they gave me. Like, they was on our shooters, so that kind of gave me a lane to um, go and make a play. And um, Coach always talk about making uh, singles, so I was just trying to make singles. Kelvin, going back to <clears throat> excuse me to defense, you mentioned Nate. I believe it was about six, the six-minute mark, maybe a little bit more, that uh, he went strictly on, on yeah. Cumberland. Um, and you kind of explained why. But from what you've seen from him and just that growth uh, to, to become that next defender behind those two, what is, I mean, what's that been like for him in terms of his, his transformation there? Um, well, I think he and Nate, he and uh, Dejan are both going to be, um, will step up. You know, Corey, Corey wasn't a great defender when he got here. Uh, he developed that. Uh, uh, Galen certainly was not either. You know, Galen, it was to his junior year before he became an elite defender. Um, but I think Nate and Dejan feed off of Corey and Galen, too. I mean, I give those two guys a lot of credit for that. Uh, they guard like that in practice. You know, defense is a big part of our DNA. Uh, not just on game nights. It's, I mean, that's how we practice. Uh, you know, out-rebounding teams, uh, defending. Um, 
whatever action it may be. But you know, Cincinnati's an ISO team. You know, they, they ISO uh, Cumberland and they also ISO uh, Williams. Uh, and I thought we did a great job. Is you know, if they're going to dance and dance and shoot jump shots, then you know we have to play with an extended hand. But if they get into the paint off a of drive, then that's when that's when we load. Uh, what we've got to do a better job is we call it crackback. Is our crackback blockout? Our guys understand what that is. We've got to get a little bit better at that. But um, Nate's Nate's not really a freshman body wise. Um, Dejan's probably somewhere between a sophomore and junior in high school. Uh, Nate's Nate's a uh, college uh, junior. You know, Nate's six five, and he weighs um, probably about two ten, two twelve. Um, you know, Dejan's you know sixty years old. He won't be two twelve. It's just not his DNA. You know, um, but uh, you know, Dejan's strength is in uh, uh, other areas, but. You know, we put Dejan on him too. He was just, he's that one quite strong. His, once he got his shoulder, once Dejan got his shoulders turned and Cumberland got his body into him, you know, he had a hard time with that. Um, but, but Nate's strong enough to win the first dribble. And when you can win the first dribble, you're usually playing against a jump shot. Hang on, let me get my phone. Corey, Mick, <clears throat> Mick Cronin said hey, you're on. Does your company have a camera? <laughs> huh? He's back there. Richard, oh. wait, we do it two different ways. Yeah, I just, I'm just wondering. I mean, <laughs> sorry, you wonder. <laughs> you can ask me for all these folks. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it for Twitter, and he's doing it for. It's a fair me. question. I didn't say it was unfair. I mean, I can't even see your mouth. <laughs> Here's right here. You go, got, me got me now. I mean, all right. Sp like speaking of my mouth, that Corey. Thing there. Corey, Mick Cronin said your way. <laughs> me and Mark's friends, we can do that with each other. We, right, yes. right, Mark. In front of all these folks, you go right on. Sure. You've been doing it for about what, about eight, nine years? Yeah. Um, Mick Cronin said you're one of the best guards in the country. What do you think about that? I appreciate it. I mean, he's a, a very, very good coach. And I mean, any praise from any coaches on, in, this, in this conference is amazing. What do you think about, uh, Gavin, what do you think about Mick calling Corey one of the best in the country? Well, he's proven it. You know, and uh, when you can play really good against uh, uh, his teams, um, that's usually a pretty accurate statement, but you know, um, I thought Corey was the one player we had last year that didn't have a uh, a bad game. You know, uh, Rob had a lot of great games, but Rob also had some games where he weren't very good. Uh, and Rob and I talked about that a lot. But Corey never had a bad game last year. You know, he had some games that are a little better than others, but his consistency uh, was amazing. Um, but his um, maturity. Is is at a high level too. You know, Corey's not. You know, Dejan has to continue to mature. You know, uh, Corey Corey's very mature. Um, mm -hmm. But that fe that feeds into his consistency too. Immature kids usually are up and down. You know, but uh, he's very unselfish. He's a team first guy, and he's a uh, he's a winner. So I I would um, I would agree with Mick. He was uh, also, Mick was, praising the daylights out of you. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, why don't you play it back so I can hear it? <laughs> I, have to, I don't know what he said. He talked about how y'all, you, you get. You no, get, I don't need to hear it. Okay. I was just joking. I'll tell you. Just, <laughs> it's the only place y'all should play each other is a golf course. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you got the two best, um, uh, two leading teams. I don't know if we're the two best teams, but we're the two teams that's leading the league right now. You know, these last two or three, you know, the first couple years, you know, we were just getting going. You know, um, our first year was probably a lot like Mick's first year. You know, I, I talked to him in the offseason. Um, I, I couldn't remember his first two years. You know, he told me how, how bad they were when they first got into the Big East, his first and second year. And, but the last seven or eight years, they've been consistent. Um, I think that's what we're um, moving toward. It's just being good every year. You know, if you're good every year, every now and then, you're going to be great. Uh, but you're not going to be great every year. You know, to, to, you're not going to be competing for national championships every year. There's only about five teams in America that can do that. Um, but you know, our, our goal here is just keep um, you know, being good, keep getting better. You know, we're we were we were a good team two years ago. You know, Galen's sophomore year, we we're 22 wins. The next year, we we're 21. Last year, 27. 
you know, it's not the first year we started winning. You know, we've been winning around here for a while. But, uh, but you can see that we've just gotten better and better and better. And I think uh, we have a lot of good days ahead of us, too. Kelvin, you had entered the stretch with the two tough back-to-backs with Central Florida on the road. And Cincinnati I was curious how you felt, you know, two wins, more how the guys responded uh, with probably one of the toughest weeks of the season that you're going to have. Yeah, we also have two road games coming up. We have to go to Connecticut and Tulane. <clears throat> and um, you know, coaches aren't fans or media. You know, we every game is hard for us. I think it's hard to win a game. You know, look at the upsets every night in college basketball. How did that team lose that game? Because it's hard to win a game. You start thinking your team, well, they're going to win this game. How do you know? It, it, these kids are human beings. You know, you just don't know. That's why you you prepare so hard and. Uh, um, you know, your preparation, whether it's in practice or scouting report, you, you can't sleep on anybody. You know, um, a lot of teams, you know, it's amazing that we've uh, won 32 straight home games. That's amazing to me, especially in 19 of them being over at uh, Texas Southern, because you'd think one night we would be off. But uh, I think it's uh, a credit to our culture and having kids like Corey and Galen. Um, uh, Devin Davis, West Van Beck, you know, and these young guys that are coming in, they're, you know, they're, they're uh, buying in uh, to the things that we teach and emphasize. And, but that's how, you, that's how you build programs. And uh, that's our goal here is to have a great program. How has your bench developed during the year? And g going into this year, did you, did you know you'd be this deep? And do you have a sense of that? Um, we were deep last year. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody asked me about uh, being deep this year. Strength of last year's team was our bench. You know, last year we came off, Armani Brooks was the sixth man of the year, so we came off the bench with him. Then we came off the bench with um, Wes Van Beck, who uh, had 20 against Wake Forest uh, off the bench. He also had 19 against somebody else. So we had Armani and Wes off the bench. Then uh, Nurizana, who played more minutes than Breon, uh, Brady, who started off the bench. And then we had Chris. And then we had Devin starting. Then we brought Fabian off the bench. So. I thought the strength of last year's team was our defense, our rebounding, and our bench. Because we played nine guys almost every night. Uh, this year, same thing. Uh, we're not playing any more, more people than we did last year. You know, this year, we have uh, our starting group. Then we play, bring Nate and Dejan off the bench, like we did Armani and Wes, right? And then um, last year, we brought Fabian off the bench. This year, we're bringing Seth off the bench. And up front, it was uh, Nura and uh, Chris. This year, it's Bryson and Chris. So. Um, but to answer your question, yes, we did. You know, Bry Bryson is a very talented kid. Now, he sat out last year, and he's only a sophomore, so he had to get acclimated. But he also had to, to buy into a new team, new culture. Um, uh, Chris was kind of our development guy. And I like to get young, big guys and develop them. Everybody's, you, know, everybody's, uh, you don't have to be very smart to figure out what somebody can't do. You know, um, yeah, I so, said, well, can't, Chris can't do this and this. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so what's the solution? The solution is develop him, get him where he can do some things. It's hard to teach 6'10 and be left-handed and uh, be athletic. You know, he, he is really, really, really uh, developed, and so is Bryson. You know, next year, those two guys will move up. Now you have Bryson and uh, Chris, and we have, a new, we have a kid that we signed coming in uh, next year. Uh, Fabian has said we'll both be back. You know, we have Dejan and Armani and Nate, so uh, we have a chance to be pretty good again. But uh, the key to next year's team will be our bench. You know, uh, my first year in this league, we only had seven guys. I figured out real early we needed a bench. We, did, we didn't have enough. We just didn't have enough. Um, the best teams in this league was SMU, who, who uh, on purpose only played seven. But um, uh, Cincinnati played four bigs. And uh, if you're going to match up with the best teams in the league, I think you really need depth up front. You, you can't play two or three bigs and think you're going to get to a 40-minute game with foul trouble and fatigue and injuries and the way we play. Corey and Dazon, um, how did this game compare to some other big games you played in atmosphere-wise? What was it like out there playing? And then also, what does it mean to you seeing the fans just get so involved? Well, the fans always help us um, play a better game than what we plan. 
they always give us um, a boost of energy to to keep going. Um, say for instance, like when the game was tied up and it was going back and forth, and we had a um, couple scores. Crowd just got loud and that made us just keep going and do more to win this game because they wanted to win this game just as much as us. So we didn't want to let them down. Yeah, just to reiterate what uh, Dejan said, like crowd is is another player in themselves. Like they have so much energy and it just gives us extra energy to just play as as hard as we possibly can. I think that's that's definitely a testament to those those the student section, all the boosters, everybody that comes to support us. Corey, I know you still guys got still some games left to play, but what was your reaction to seeing you guys on the three seed in the projection yesterday? And also, how gratifying was it to beat a team of this caliber in the fashion you did uh, tonight, knowing that uh, there's, you know, you, where you guys are, where you are at so far this season? Um, we don't really pay attention to seasons at this point. I mean, we are we take every day as as it is. Like we just take them one one step at a time. Um, Cincinnati is a great team. I mean, they they play just as hard as us. They they don't quit. They fight. They rebound. I mean, it was a scrappy win. We we definitely needed it for sure. So I mean, it was a great win. Dejan, a quick one for you. Can you describe uh, this team's dedication, defensive intensity? Um, that's what Coach preach. Every day at practice, we we defend and rebound. Um, we go at it. We compete. So uh, we just try our best to carry it over to the game because that's our culture. And if you ain't buying in our culture, then you ain't playing. <laughs> so we have to do that to be on the court. Dejan, how much pride do you guys take impacting the game off the bench? And was it any adjustment for you? Did you have to learn how to play off the coming off the bench? Um, not really because I just accepted my role. And um, I just have to learn that if I have to come off the bench, then that's what I have to do to help my team win. And um, I, I got to try to be the best, uh, um, best I can off the bench to um, help us get that win. So I don't really pay attention to that. I just want to win. And I care for my teammates, and I know they care for me. And we just want to win um, at the end of the day.